Well, hello everyone. Oh, God, this has been a while. Uh, welcome to my channel, Linda's 144 Hobbies. And uh, today it's another stitch along where I'm going to continue my stitching on the supersized max color uh, Once Upon a Fairy Tale by Amy Stewart and designed by Heaven and Earth. Um, my needle minder is from Rachel Ray. Uh, check out her channel at YouTube. I have lots of her, well, not, maybe not lots, but quite a few of her um, needle needle minders. I love needle minders. And the fabric I have bought, I think, from uh, Crafty Kitten. And I have bought a complete, uh, what do you call it, a DMC set for, for the Once Upon a Fairy Tale, uh, a material kit from uh, Barb on Facebook. And she makes awesome uh, thread packages for a good price. And today I'm gonna try to finish the first square. I don't know, can you see it? Yeah, the first 10 by 10 square. Uh, so I'm gonna stitch with the 797 color. It's also blue, so it might be a bit boring to look at. But that's what I decided to do. It's like 7.30 in the morning and I have put my scissors elsewhere. Yes. I must confess, I've started using my cross stitch. Whoops, I got stuck on the magnet. <clears throat> that was kind of funny. Uh, I started using my cross stitch scissors for something else i'm horrible and now you know it doesn't cut you can see it it doesn't cut properly but you guys know what that mean i need to go and buy a new cross stitch scissor yeah so uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit off camera. It's been a while, so I feel like out of uh, training. So I'm just pulling one of the six strands. And the length of my thread is from, I hold the thread like this, and then I pull it, you know, to my elbow, and then I cut it. I think for me that's a nice um, length uh, for the thread. It usually keeps um, uh, nice for that length. Um, sometimes it would be nicer to go a little bit shorter because I think the stitching will be faster. Uh, and then I'm just threading it like this. At least that's how I'm usually doing. And now it doesn't work because I'm going to show it on camera. So I need to lick it. Let me try. Maybe it's out of focus. I don't know. And now when I'm going to start stitching, I'm realizing my setup is like awkward for my back. So, but I will, I will do my best without shaking it and stuff too much. Yeah. Uh, so I'm stitching this on, um, 25 count. And now I should start the loop. I should start the loop. It's, uh, I can get to the back a bit better. 
I'm going to start with a loop stitch for one threads. These, this is one of the cool things about YouTube. All the new things you learn. Oh, this is... I think I need to rearrange the way I'm sitting if I'm gonna be able to have a little stitch along for 30 minutes. Let's see, four of these. One. Two. And four. And then sometimes I check. There's one, two, three left to be stitched. I check my pattern, which I have a digital pattern and I use the Pattern Keeper app. And if you haven't gotten that app yet, just go get it. It's awesome. It makes your life so much easier. Um, I'm actually thinking if I should just, no, let's continue. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen so many of your pictures out there on Facebook. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm having morning coffee still. Mm. And I've seen quite a few starts. Uh, and I follow Rachel Ray and she, I don't know if she started, I need to, I need to start, you know, uh, get updated on her stitching. Um, I think she started some kind of stitch mania where she's like crazy starting a whole lot of, uh, different cross stitch patterns. And I was like, oh, oh, I want to do that too. Oh yeah. It's so me, you know, I. I get excited about a new hobby. I start doing that and I am, I might always go back to cross stitching. So yeah, I've been very busy at work, uh, but at, at my, in my weekends, I've spent my time, um, uh, building plastic scale models and wooden ship models um, and then I stopped doing something else but this morning and I've seen I've got gotten quite a few new subscribers oh I'm sorry I touched the mic and I know not all of you want to look at cross stitching but I think a lot of you guys want to do that and I think that this stitch along is quite something a lot of you want to see unfortunately i haven't done that much but uh yeah i felt like i need to make a little stitch along and maybe i can settle with not so much editing so it will go fast so i don't need to use a lot of time and energy on it i need to save it for work uh, i work at the hospital uh, not as a doctor or a nurse or anything. Uh, I'm the leader of like 24 secretaries. And yeah. Um, we're not. Like caring for the patients in these times. But. Um, everyone has their mission 
at the hospital, you know. Everyone has their thing they need to do to make the whole process work. So we're, we're all important, we're all under pressure in one way or another. Um, and the new, this leader job is, I can't say it's new to me anymore because I've had it for five months, but it still feels <laughs> new. So I don't have a lot of energy when I get home or time. I think it's more time I have a problem with. Uh, and my daughter, I, she's like, it's the first year she's getting uh, grades. And me, who's a grown up, know how important it is to have a good start, you know, in life with grades. You don't need to spend time and money to improve them when you're grown up. So I'm really, you know, spending a lot of uh, time after work with her and her homework to kind of help her. But a lot of you guys out there who are stitching this Once Upon a Fairy Tale are doing such a great job. I love this picture. But, but I love, love, love so many more Heaven and Earths. And they're huge. You know, now when you have the opportunity to get them in supersized, it's very difficult to settle for a regular or a mini, especially with um, with Amy Stewart's where there's so much detail in. I mean, you want as much as possible out from that picture, right? Uh, so I know it's huge. I mean, I don't even have a wall where I can put this finished piece if I ever finish it. Um, but I just enjoy the process. It has always been like that for me uh, when it comes to heaven and earth. It's not the finishes. I mean, if you do finish, I think it's awesome. I'm very proud of the few finishes I have. Uh, but it's the process, you know. I, there is nothing. I love different kind of cross stitches. I bought uh, quite a few new patterns, which I love to look at. I haven't started them. But heaven and earth, I don't know. It's very, very, very special. So. Yeah, so now when I've watched all these new starts and beautiful pictures and, you know, the happiness when you get to start a new project is so awesome you know all the excitement and everything oh i really really want to get myself a new thread pack and some um, fabric and pattern i have over a hundred patterns but i seem to always want to start a new one like buy a new pattern and start that one i don't know why um but uh i love randall spangler uh, and his dragons but there i feel unless it's like the the sanctuary of knowledge or you know these uh designs where he has uh like of of his studies and rooms then I think, well, yeah, uh, a supersized would be awesome just to get all that detail. But somehow I've stitched um, one mini, which turned out awesome, Sunday Delight. And I finished uh, a quick stitch, which was with all the detail as a regular. Um, but I mean, the result is just amazing. And I think that works fine, uh, with the pictures where, you know, where, uh, the dragon is 
the focus. Um, so I have one of those minis. I haven't started yet. Dragon in the morning. So I'm very excited to start that one actually. And he has a few new mores. I think uh, it's raining chocolate chips or something. And the midnight snack. And the, the flossing. Uh, there are so many cute... Um, with Ren Randall Spangler, I just love his art. But then, you know, you have Amy Stewart's detailed fantasy. Oh. But then I'm thinking, well, I can't stitch her stuff unless it's supersized. I don't know why. So there is two of hers that I really would like and at the same time I don't want to get them in super size because I will never ever ever finish them but it is the the travel not the world traveling bookshelf it's the um, oh, it's the one with all the different uh, what do you call it travel yeah, I will probably have to edit the video and put in the name of the cross stitch and maybe a picture of the design. I think is so cool and I would like all the detail in there. It's something with time traveling or something. And there is the, the animal bookshelf. That's awesome as well. All those animals and the detail in that. Oh my God. But it's also a lot of people stitch that uh, the Animal Kingdom uh, bookshelf. And you kind of, the eye, you know, it gets um, full by looking at the progress everyone is doing. So you feel, after a while, I feel like, well, no. There are so many stitching it and I can enjoy their pro progress. So I don't need to, you know, get it. But those two are quite nice. And, you know, oh, I saw that they did the quick stitch of the uh, secret parade, I think. And they really made a great job zooming in on all the animals. It's very nice. But she released, she, I mean, um, Amy Stewart, released a new design. Um, and it's the inside of a pirate ship. It's so, so freaking cool. And I really hope that they're going to do that make that into a cross stitch pattern yep that is definitely something I could imagine starting but then I've started looking at Josephine Wall I never wanted her art before most of them I don't like they're beautiful but I feel like, my God, it's going to be crazy stitching, something like that. But I do look at her designs more and more. And I'm starting to feel as a heaven, as an, what do you call it? As a heaven and earth design cross stitcher, maybe I ought to own and start a Ruth Josephine Wall cross stitch. Yeah, I don't know. But otherwise, I love Spangler. And what is so nice is that it's great. It's a great uh, resolve with the min minis. And you're able to, to finish those in a lifetime for sure. So I think my thread is too short now to stitch with. And then I usually just pull up the end, like you saw there. And then I try to st stitch it in, in, like, in the back. 
Um, so now I'm going to pull some more thread. I have the one I cut earlier. I'm gonna pull one of the, there's five strands left and I just pull. just I put it back on that card um, am I in focus yes so where am I at Am I, I think I stitched that wrong. So now, uh, as you saw when I started up here, I started with, um, with the loop stitch. Loop stitch, yeah, loop stitch. Uh, but now when I have a whole row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, I think there's like 10 stitches, I don't start with a loop stitch I just try to do like like here I um, I go down and get a small tail like that I go up where I'm gonna start and then hopefully they get stitched in on the back of the piece I've never I've never had any problems with this. still here the sound is still going it's just me who I'm just enjoying that feeling of cross stitching there is nothing like it so now I got to the two ends and then I will just cut them like so With some coffee Oh, there is nothing better to drink than that first cup of coffee in the morning. And then you can see, can you see that on camera? Where's my needle here? There were some small ends, like 0 0.9 millimeters left of those thread ends. So when I stick the needle up, I just take the thread a little bit up and down so the ends got get stuck into the back or something like that I'm sorry if my English is crappy but hey this is me uh, yeah uh, let's go back to the talk 
talking about heaven and earth, the signs. Uh, when um, the treasure hunt bookshelf uh, came, it was the first bookshelf they released on heaven and earth. Everyone went bananas, even me. But I think I didn't have money at that time to buy uh, the design or something. I don't know. I just, uh, or I just felt like everyone was getting this design and started starting it. So I felt again like, well, I don't need to start it because so many else are starting. I don't know why. I just, I just didn't get it done. But later on, when super sized and everything came out, and they started cutting out. Uh, not card cutting, cutting, but you know, digi digitally, or, or how you say it, um, parts of the design and making that like almost supersized. And the detail in there is just, it's jaw dropping, seriously. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't like, 999 by 780 as uh, stitches but you know like a regular size kind of yeah uh, and I think that was really cool uh, so I actually bought some of those on the treasure hunt I've started one and I'm extreme cr cross country stitching that so I finished all the black on that and it's so cool you know you can see like the contours of the horse uh, standing there so that's kind of cool I like those kinds of uh, designs I think they call them quick, quick stitches even though they're not that quick since they're like they've become a regular size even though it's just a small part of the uh, the design you know the um, original picture I think I got to there so my goal is as I said to finish the first 10 by 10 square because for for me that's gonna be like my first finish of this design so that's my goal so I have two more rows with this blue color uh, until I'm done with that first grid So how did you guys um, find out about heaven and earth? Uh, tell me about the first time you guys found out about heaven and earth and what your reaction was. For me, well, it was years back. Um, I was looking for cross-stitch kits in Sweden. And that's, you know, I've cross-stitched like all my life. But at that point, I was like, I've started to find um, bigger projects. Uh, which were like covering the whole uh, fabric, which was uh, new to me. Um, I think there were quite a few dimensions I got and I thought it was so cool. So I wanted more and more, you know. And, and I remember I was on this website and I found, um, now I can't remember that, um, 
designer, but I found a kit from Heaven and Earth on this web page. It's, uh, I think there's like, can it be like a waterfall? Uh, and there's a lot of greens and then there's a beautiful woman in a white dress. I don't know if it's her dress is the waterfall or something. But uh, if I find uh, the picture and the designer I'm thinking about, um, I will link it or, you know, show it in the, on the screen here somewhere. Um, but then, you know, I think in the description they have put, you know, this designer name, Heaven and Earth Designs. I was like, my God, this is like one of those posters you buy and put on, on your wall. Um, I was like showing my husband and I was like, can you imagine this? This is a cross stitch pattern. I was in, amazed. So I went, you know, I googled Heaven and Earth Designs and I, <laughs> you know, and I enter this web page and the first thing I see is Train of Dreams. And I was just mind blown. I mean, I was totally, utterly speechless. So I, I bought the, no, I didn't buy it. I found another web page where they sold the kit. I bought the Train of Dreams right away. And then I got Santa's uh, workshop, I think it's called by uh, Gustafsson, Scott Gustafsson. And he has also one with Snow White. I never stitched those, but I did finish the Train of Dreams. And, you know, I never thought I would actually feel like this. But I think I could actually start a new train of dreams, but as a super sized and um, max color, because I, I I love that picture. I love everything what's going on in there. Uh, but then there is the flight of imagination, which is kind of the same. Uh, but I don't feel the same about that picture. So that I could actually, you know, think of starting that. Yeah, that would be awesome. But we have so many things to start. Yeah, so since that day, I have never, not until this year or at the end of last year, uh, I haven't bought any other cross stitch pattern and I think I said it was like uh, I think they started 2007 I think it was around 2010 around there somewhere that I started with heaven and earth designs and I haven't had that many finishes since then <laughs> but hey I'm enjoying the process. So yeah, I was stunned that there were actually uh, a place uh, that uh, created these designs. Simply amazing. So... I think I'm going to stitch this one as well there. Like so. Thread is almost so. 
So I have three stitches left there. I think this is a good place to stop. And since uh, I don't feel like I, I could, you, you know, pull up the end over here, but I don't want to do that. And I don't feel like ending with a pin stitch or anything. So I'm just gonna turn the work over and fasten it on the back as I, I don't normally do that because the heaven and earth designs are so big. Uh, so it's just very bulky. So now let's turn it over. And I want you to see the back side because I'm not ashamed of it. So as you can see, there's a lot of jumping around here. That's because I started out cross uh, extreme cross country stitching this thing, but then I decided it would be more fun to stitch like this on camera. So I have my needle and the end tail here. So I'm just gonna tuck it in like so. And I feel like I usually want to secure it a little bit more. I don't know why, because it won't go anywhere. So I usually go back if it's possible, if there's enough thread to do so. There you go. And then I cut that last end off. And now I'm turning the, the, the thingy. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it back over. I'm sorry if it's a bit wiggly, but it's my, um, my stand, which is uh, like this. Um, unfortunately, the um, Lowry stand, which I love, aren't that or isn't that uh, good with uh, Q-snaps. And I usually use Q-snaps for my Heaven and Earth designs because they're so big. Uh, yeah, uh, so I think you can see a difference in the blue, right? So it's a bit darker and a bit lighter. So that's very nice. And now I have a few stitches he up here, uh, which is a another color. There's three different colors up here. And I want to end that because then all of this corner is going to be done, yay. But before I do that, I need to go to the laundry and fix that. So I will just take a small break and come back to you. Yeah, so I'm back. Um, so now I've checked which number of the next color I'm gonna stitch. And since the sky is blue, it's surprisingly 798 I'm gonna stitch now. But don't worry, it's not that many uh, stitches. So I'm just gonna, as I said, I pinch the end of the threads here between my fingers, and then I drag it all the way to, this is my elbow. It's very round and nice, but it's my elbow. And that is where I cut it off with my <clears throat> slow scissors because I've broken the rule of using the scissors to something else. Yep. And then I, yeah, now I, now I didn't do it as I usually do, but anyway, I put, put, put it back here. Like so. And I pull a thread. So, and I guess usually I, I keep the rest of the threads out because when you stitch this much and if you have a lot of the same color uh, 
in your pattern. I usually finish all these threads. So, but since uh, I'm going to switch colors a little bit, I will just put it back on the card. You see how easy I'm threading the thread now when I decided not to show you how I'm threading. It's so typical when you when you're going to show it on camera. It's like mm -mm, it's not going to work. So now I'm going to start with the loop thread. No, with the loop start again. And I don't know if you're going to see. Um, but uh, when I stitch, uh, I stitch uh, from the bottom left corner up to the right, and then I go up, excuse me, oh, I'm sorry. So I start at, in the bottom left corner, go down in the top right, and then I go up in the lower right corner and end in the top left. Corner. So that's how I make a full stitch. So when I'm starting with the loop, I go down in the bottom right corner and I leave a little tail and I go up in the left bottom hole and I just hold the tail like this. You don't have to do that, but. Anyway, and then I go down in the same where I just went up, which means I go down in the left corner. So I make a little loop. So now I have a tail and a loop. Then I go up in the top right corner. I just hold the tail. So it won't go away. And then I go through the loop. And I pull like so. And then I go down in the bottom left corner. And then I go up in the bottom right corner where the, where the tail is. And I can pull now a little bit. I'm not holding the, the tail or anything. And I can feel that the stitch is secured. And then I go down in the top left corner. And I've made a full stitch with a loop start. I cut the tail. This is, I think this is the best thing I have learned since I started cross stitching, how to start with a loop stitch and you only have like one thread. And now I'm going to be careful because I, I was just going to do one stitch there with this color. So I go down instead. I'm going to do three across here. Let's see. And then I think it was one up here, like so. Yeah, come on. So, like so. I'm gonna mark them off. Oh, like that. And then I have a lot of thread left. And I have a few more stitches not too far away. 
So I'm going to jump, take a jump and go over there because I don't think the jump is too far. I'm up here in the first uh, grid. It's actually the second grid. The last stitch I did here is just the first stitch in the second grid. And the other uh, stitches in that color is just in the same grid just over here. So I'm gonna do those. And let's see. Um, so I count this right, I think it's the third from up. One, two, three. Yeah, that's correct. Always check my pattern. Recount if you have to. I'm gonna have three of them over here. Let's see. Can you see? Yeah, it's in the camera. You might just have seen my hand the whole video. I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. Three and then one down. Imagine how many types of blues there is. Amazing. And then down diagonally, like so. Come on. And then I think we have some stitches over here. My lamp is squeaking. I don't know why. Oh yeah. The holder for my um, surf pad or whatever you call it is like up against the lamp. So that's why it's squeaking. So now I've done those. I'm going to mark them off and jump ahead for the next one. And it is over here. One stitch. So this is like typical for the max color um, in all this blue. And then, you know, you have two stitches of blue there and two there. And there. I don't think you have that in the, um, the regular pattern or uh, yeah, when you don't have max colors, you don't have that many color changes, of course. Let's see. And then I'm going to continue jumping around have this one here as a mark one two down one two oh it's tiny I can feel it's been a while since I was stitching one two and then two to the left one and two one and then down to the line, three from the corner, one, two, and three. Let's see what's the easiest way. I will go down to underneath and you have, I have two stitches there. And I have one there. Are you still in the camera? Yeah. So it's the third to the right. One, two, where do you, two, and three. So we're going to do three on the diagonal. One, two, back and 
mark off and then I'm jumping down two one two and one to the left no to the right sorry And then we're doing two stitches down, one and two, mark them off, and then I'm going to go four to the left, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one down. mark off and then I have one in the top corner just above the blue stitched here like so come on yep marked off and then I'm going to continue up one two three four five six up one one two three four five and six I need to recount one two three four five and six Now I made a mistake because I was going to go one to the left as well. Good thing I saw that right away. That's what's so good with the Pattern Keeper, Keeper app because you can zoom in. So at the moment, you know, I, I just see in the pattern on my surf pad, I just see these two grids. So makes it a lot easier and faster I don't I'm not saying I don't make mistakes because I do I really do seriously but I think I would have done more if I only have the paper shards like I did before two here and then I go up two and make two and now I'm just going to do half stitches and half back because I'm going to stitch that way so I'm trying to stitch the way I'm traveling around all right so now I'm going to jump over to this grid over here and I have the blue over here. So that's, um, let's see, I think I'm going to start there three, four. So I'm going to go to the corner of the grid. It's here. I'm going to count three, one, and three and four up one four counting the first one one two three four sometimes it's good to have like a second needle to help you count or have one of those i think you call it countess needles i have them as well so I can count one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm in the right spot. So I'm doing one there. I'm going to jump one and do one. And 
then I'm going to jump one and do one. And then I'm going downwards. Getting a strange angle uh, on my hand underneath. Uh, I stitch two handed, so I have one hand on top and my left hand. I have, have it underneath catching um, the needle. And with the stand, I'm floor stand I'm using now, I get a very strange um, angle if I'm too close to the uh, arms that are holding the frame. So that slows me down a little bit and it doesn't feel very nice for the hand. Okay. There and then one under straight away. Yeah. Like so. If I would make a s one little mistake here in the sky, I wouldn't change that. No one will ever see it. It's the details which counts. One, I mean, everything counts in a picture, but if you make a mistake like on a face or uh, here, like on a dragon or something, you might see the difference there, but I don't think you would. So, um, so let's see. So I jumped up at the right spot, like so. And then we do three here on the diagonal. Then I'm going to jump one and do one like that. And then I'm going to mark all of them off. And take a look. And I don't have any more of that color close by. So I'm going to finish the thread. And I think I can finish with, I don't know how you call it. I learned it somewhere. I need to find where. Mm, let's jump over here, I think. I go up at the bottom left. You need to find a place where, you know, the weave goes like this and how how is the next yeah or underneath so i need to find a place where the thread is going from up uh, from you know north to south and where <laughs> the thread the weave thread going from you know left to right is like this underneath and then i i go up in the bottom left corner and then i I'm going to try to split the thread, which is going under the weave, under the other thread. And on this count, it's kind of hard, but I think I got it right. So, and I'm just going to hold so I don't pull the cost. And then I go down and I pull to the right. So I try to hide it underneath the thread, which is going on, on top of the other. And then I go up in the top left corner. I don't think you guys are going to understand what I'm saying. I think I need to show this very close to for you guys to understand. It's also something I learned on YouTube. This kind of pin stitch and I pull it under 
so you don't see it too much. So it's going to disappear when I uh, when I'm going to stitch it. And then I just go up in one of the corners and cut off the tail. Like so. Finished with that color. Awesome. It's looking nice, isn't it? Yeah, I think so anyway. Mm. So I have three more, more stitches up here to call the first grid done. And it's two different colors, amazingly. And now I need to find out it's 809. And lucky me, it's still on the same card. So now this is 809. So it's a little bit, a bit lighter um, blue. So that's kind of nice that you can see a difference. Now I've showed you how I start the threads and everything. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do, you know, whoops. The threads don't have to fall to the floor. We have enough dog hair on the cross stitch as it is. Yeah, so I'm starting with the loop. Oh, that's the two stitches in that color. I'm cutting off the tail from the loop start. Um, I'm marking them off on the pattern and I'm checking if we have any more of that color and nope, we don't. So we're gonna end the thread. And since it's like in the middle of all the colors, I'm just gonna flip it over and end it as I did the other. And now you won't be able to see it in camera. Do you want to see it in camera? I'm running it underneath some stitches. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one of my other favorite Heaven and Earth designs. And that is, of course, uh, Gordon Fitchett and his, his ducks. Oh my God. I have stitched some more on that. I have, I've cut, gotten to the birds. So <clears throat> I've stitched some of those in white and some more on his arms. So yeah. I do feel like maybe it's time to kind of finish off the white on the duck because then you, <clears throat> yeah, you know, you, it's a big step to have finished the color where there's most stitches of that color and it's done, you know, it's like a big step. Anyway, so the last stitch. And that is 792 and it's not on this card. So now I need to, uh, it's gonna crinkle a little bit because I have all the threads in plastic bags. So 
So, you know, I have lots of cards. So here's three cards with colors. <laughs> I think there's like 235 colors in, in, this, in the max color designs. Let's see. Oh no, this must be the end colors, yeah. Yeah. So, the wrong bag. I need to pull put back back everything. But I mean, you're not getting it very edited this show. I don't think I'm going to cut anything uh because this is how it is to stitch a big heavener design. And I am very sure that people have uh, great ways to organize the threads so it's going to be easy to find the color. Let's see, this is 800. What did I say? 792. Ah, uh, I was hoping it was that card. Uh, maybe here. 792. No. Nope, not on these either. Yeah, here we have it. I actually like to have threads in plastic bags, actually. Uh, I try that with uh, some of the... Um, uh, not Mirabilia, yeah, I have it on my Mirabilia and on the Hillbill, uh, I think it's called, the Hillbill uh, cross stitch pattern. It was quite nice and fast, but I mean, they don't have 235, but I think if you would have like a ring, metal ring with 100 colors on, I think it would be easy to find them. So let's stop talking and continue. So this is the new card. We have some. I know Randall Spangler have a lot of these colors in his gold, the gold colors, the frames and uh, I don't know, tables and stuff, everything around. Uh, and these are very nice. I, it's not my favorite colors, but in stitching, I love to stitch with these colors. I don't know why, but the turns out very beautiful on the, uh, the cross stitch patterns. So this is the 792. Today I really feel like starting a new, a new cross stitch. Or I will just, I think I might just start, you know, continue stitching on this lovely piece. So to show you maybe the next time I do a stitch along, I might, you know, have gotten a little bit further on this part of the uh, the design, so you don't have to watch me stitching sky in different blues all the time. I think that would be kind of nice. I know my husband is going to say like, what are you going to go back to cross stitching? Didn't you just build plastic models? Yes. Yes, honey. <laughs> so, um, let's, I, d I, have, I haven't, um, stitched with the uh, loop starts on any other, I think. So, I actually don't know how secure the stitches will be. If 
they will, you know, um, how, how, oops, uh, how do you call that? Loosen up? When I not loosen up? I don't know if you say it like that in English. Um, but I hope not. And I think um, usually when I've done these, made these, I haven't made a lot of them, but my stitch alongs, I usually have a camera of myself as well. So, you know, you can see the one who's talking with you. And um, sometimes it's easier to show what I'm doing um, on another in a not in another camera angle but it, it's so early in the morning and my hair is like everywhere <laughs> and you know I'm just wearing uh, comfy clothes which I usually do anyway but so I felt like well I think you guys want to see the stitching and not me so that's that's okay so that was a very blue stitch I wonder how it looks that is important too when you stitch stuff like this I mean take pictures um, take a step back and take a look of you at your uh, progress it, it's going to look so much better than when you're like having it up in your face and I can see even now uh, in the video you can see the fabric underneath uh the blue but when when you're done and this is framed i mean and you take like a few steps back no one's going to notice it so i'm just saying you know enjoying the process getting no bulkiness and no pain or <laughs> bleeding fingers is more important than giving getting that top-notch full coverage and you're fighting to get the stitches through you know you can have a grid with like 60 color changes in one grid and I'm telling you it's going to get bulky um, but I know some of the people out there are really good at stitching with like on a 28 count or smaller I don't know but and of course that looks Oh, amazing of course it does but for me 25 and 27 is the smallest that's fine it would be cool to do a mini but two over two on a bigger you know a smaller count that would be kind of cool or two over two on 28 count that would be awesome that's an idea. Yeah, well, anyway, let's get back to um, uh, trying to end this um, stitch here. It's like some th a little uh, square I've noticed. I wonder what it might, what might come underneath. Uh, so I need to jump. Where am I going to jump? I'm going to jump all over here all the way over here from there to there that feels a little bit long but then i start considering how much thread do i use for ending it i usually do at least one way there and then how much thread am i using to start and it might just i might have just jumped over there and just yeah I'm going to do that. I'm going to turn this over and run the thread under to where I'm going to go to. Let's see. So I'm going to jump to here. And I know a lot of you people are going to scream. No, you need to finish and restart. No, I'm not going to bother. I'm not going to bother. 
so you can see the end the back yeah so let's see without pulling everything off so this is where I was stitching and this is where I'm gonna jump to right so I'm just gonna run now you're not gonna see anything and let's see if I can do it with my left hand I'm just gonna run the thread underneath like this I don't always do it like this, but right now I felt like doing it like this. So I said I was going to do start here, right? Yeah. So I'm going to do one. Jump one. stitch one and then I'm gonna go over here like so and then I'm gonna jump downwards to these stitches over here I'm thinking about the song. Was it in the 90, 90s? Jump around, jump, 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 jump around. And I don't know if you guys, it was like, I, was was it like the, the beginning of rap or hip hop? Uh, when it came to Sweden anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go down here. So I'm jumping around. So we're getting to the end of this stitch along. I've stitched. Um, has it been? How many different colors have I stitched? one two four four different colors awesome awesome sausage no i didn't say that like so and then i'm gonna go over to this one And then I'm going to jump all over to this part over here. And I have one over here, right? then up to there's one there and then down so I'm gonna I don't know if this thread is gonna be enough for the last stitches here but we'll see so yeah why I'm I'm actually gonna I'm jumping around like this it's just first of all I don't care how the backside is gonna look because no one else is gonna see it when it's finished um, I'm very impatient you know I want progress um, so you know all the starting and ending threads yeah so 
I'm just like, let's just jump over there. Um, the downside to it is m maybe that if you pull the jump too hard, so when you're releasing the tension of the fabric, you might affect the result. So if you are going to jump around like I'm doing, just, you know, be sure to, yeah, be careful with the jumping. So where I'm stitching this stitch right now is where we ended that uh, thread before where I was, you know, trying to hide uh, the thread underneath the weave. So this stitch is going to hide that now. Now you can't see it anymore. And of course I noticed like if you do that on black with a black thread and then you're going to cover it with white, that won't uh, hide it like that, of course. So it's not, you know, wrong to kind of be aware of which color is, is around, uh, you know, which is surrounding the, the stitch where you're um, um, no, I did wrong where you're like uh, ending the thread. See, come see. It's that angle again. I, I feel feel it right away that my hand gets in a strange angle and it's hard to get the needle right. Jump down and stitch two. Then I'm going to jump up and do three on the diagonal. And then we're done. This was really, really nice. Come on. I've been thinking about this for quite a while. So it's so nice to make the YouTube video for you guys and to stitch a little bit, you know, to get a little bit of progress on this awesome design. I just love this picture. When when I saw that this was going to come, I was like, I'm going to set everything aside and stitch it. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't leave <laughs> all my other uh, designs. So, no, I had to... Um, Yeah, keep on stitching all the other stuff, of course. So I'm just going to put uh, this piece of thread of the color back on the card. And I'm going to end the thread. I'm just going to run it over as I run it over, run it under some of the stitches. Get my 
scissors and cut. So I have a little bit of thread left here. Um, and I can see on the pattern that I have like two single stitches <clears throat> like, um, let's see, I have it one here and one like here. So I might use this thread to, f to make those stitches. So, but you don't have to see that. So yeah, let's see, can I zoom out a little bit? No, because then you're gonna see all my mess. Oh. So I think this will be all for this stitch along. And I got a request of um, um, marking the titles of this stitch along with like part one, two, three, four, yada, yada, yada. So it's easier for you guys to see, uh, of course, uh, which video comes first. So I'm definitely gonna change that. Um, so it's easier for you to follow along. I feel like <clears throat> that it would be nice to try to finish this section um, before I get back for a new video and maybe start something around here to see what that might be. Uh, maybe there is some new nice colors to to stitch with. So that's the plan um, to, to stitch this part uh, with max colors might take a whole lot of long time. So we'll see, um, not making any promises, but um, but yeah, um, thank you guys for uh, following my channel, uh, leaving comments and, and likes. I really appreciate it. Um, it feels like uh, I'm not alone when I'm making these stitching videos. So um, I wanna thank you all for keeping me company as well. And some of you have a very special place. Um, you know who you are. Thank you for caring and saying hello sometimes. It's very appreciated. I miss you all. Uh, so yeah, thanks for today. Um, don't forget to hit, hit subscribe if you haven't already done that. And I will see you the next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.